Right, good morning, Year 9. Uh, today I would like us to do an experiment. I'm going to explain to you what it is we're going to do. Um, so we've just started a unit on waves. Uh, I thought it'd be great if we could actually do something hands-on where we could investigate waves. So we're going to start with, you can see I'm in my kitchen, we're going to do some kitchen science here, okay? Uh, and we're going to be looking at water waves. And my question today is going to be, how does the depth of water affect the speed at which the water waves travel? Now, I'm sure you've all seen water waves before, either coming in from the sea, or every time you drop something in water, you get those ripples moving outwards. Well, those ripples are water waves. And uh, when you see the lines between the ripples, what you're really looking at is the distance between the peaks on the wave. So we're going to be following the ripples as they move. We're going to be timing them, and we're going to be working out the speed at which the waves travel. And we're going to look, do these waves in water travel fastest in deep water or in shallow water? Okay, so uh, obviously to do an experiment, we need some equipment. Uh, I've deliberately chosen this experiment because it's something you can do at home. Okay, You've probably got all that. I'm pretty certain you can get hold of all the equipment you need. So things you are going to need. You're going to need a tray, a plastic tray like this. Uh, this is where we're going to put our water and we're going to create our waves. Ideally, we want the tray to be kind of regular in size. We want it to have a flat bottom if we can. Okay, And we want it to have kind of straight sides. Now, mine's not perfect. If you, you know, it's got slightly curved corners, and if you look at the bottom, there's actually some grooves around the outside. Now, ideally, we want a completely flat bottom and we want square edges, but if you can only, like I do, get hold of something like this, that will be fine too. So this is where we're going to create our water waves. Um, and the things we're going to need in order to measure their speed and to measure the depth of water are going to be a ruler. So we're going to stick this into the tray to measure the depth of the water. Um, Ideally, we want a tape measure, okay, or a longer ruler, like uh, something that can actually measure the length of this tray, because you can see here, my ruler's not big enough. I mean, we can get behind that, though. We can quite easily just uh, use a 30 centimeter ruler and put a mark on it and then move your 30 centimeter ruler. So I've got a tape measure, but you can get away without that if you've got a ruler, okay? You're going to need something to time with, so I'm using my phone and stop clock. Uh, and something to basically pour water into the tray. So I've got a kettle here, not to heat the water up, just to pour it in. So we're gonna start off by pouring some water into the tray. Okay, uh, it's up to you how much you pour to begin with, because you're all gonna have different sized trays, so I can't really give you an amount of water. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna pour all the water in, and then we're gonna take a ruler, okay, and we're gonna measure the depth of the water in the tray. Okay, just drop it in. Um, now, what I'm going to advise, depending on the height of your tray, we need different depths of water, okay? And I would suggest we start off with a half centimetre depth, and then a one centimetre, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So I want to try and get hold of six different depths. That would be half a centimetre, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Now you can use uh, deeper water if you've got a tray with bigger sides, but obviously if your water becomes too deep, Okay, what, what the method I'm going to show you to create the waves is going to be to lift up the tray and to let go. Okay, if your water is too deep in the tray, the water is just going to come over the side. So we're going to be a bit careful with how much water we put in. You can see I've got a towel here ready because things might get a little bit wet when you do this. Okay, um, if we if we've got a, thick, a tray with kind of a, a high rim to it, uh, we shouldn't get any water escaping. But you know, make sure that when you lift up your tray. You know, you're careful and the water doesn't just spill out because if it does, the depth is not going to be what we initially measure. So I would look at my tray here and I would say, well, my, my water is approximately half a centimetre. Now I want you to be better than approximately. If yours is, say, uh, 0 0.4 centimetres and you need it to be 0 0.5, you're going to fill up some more water, you're going to pour a bit more in, you're going to get it as close to the depth as you possibly can. Okay? So, First thing we're going to do then is we're going to set up half a centimetre depth of water in the tray. Okay. Now, when you lift up this tray, uh, you're probably not going to see very well on, on this video. In fact, I'm pretty certain you're not. But as soon as I let go of it, I can see a ripple which moves back and forth across the tray. Okay. Now, once I see a ripple hit one of the sides of the tray, because a ripple might start in the middle of the tray. Once it hits the first side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my stop clock and I'm going to start uh, timing it. Okay, and I'm going to time the ripple until it does three complete lengths of the tray. So if it starts over this side, I'm going to time it to go to this side, to go back, and to go back again. So every time, we're timing the waves to do three complete lengths of the tray. 
Okay, and we're just going to take that on our stop clock. Okay, and then we're going to repeat it, and we're going to repeat it again. So generally in science, we don't just take one measurement. Okay, we take it a number of times, and that's because in in any measurement we take, there's going to be an uncertainty and error. Okay, and that generally with, with most experiments, the more times you repeat it, the lower you can make that that random error. Now in this case, the biggest error is probably going to be my timing. Did I start my clock at the right time? Did I stop my clock at the right time? Now, maybe one time I start my clock too early, okay? Maybe another time I stop it too late. But if I do it lots of times, I can kind of uh, take away part of the error of me not timing it correctly. So we're going to repeat it three times. If we had lots and lots of times, maybe we'd repeat it 10 times. But I think for now, we're just going to get in that idea of repeating, and we're going to do the original one and two more to give us three repeats, okay? So first of all, we're going to do it with my half a centimetre depth. Okay, I'm going to set it up, let go, time three lengths, do it again, do it again. Then I'm going to change the depth. So I'm going to fill up my kettle with water again. I'm going to pour it in. As I'm pouring it in, I'm going to have my ruler in. I'm going to wait until it gets to one centimetre. Okay, and when I've got to one centimetre, that's my new depth. I'm going to repeat it again. And you should find that as you change the depth, the speed of the waves does change. Okay, so it's not going to stay the same. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of difference between your repeat readings anyway. So when you do it three times, you're probably not going to get exactly the same time. Or you're not going to get exactly the same time every time. But you should notice that there's a change. Every time the depth increases, you should notice a change in the speed of the waves. And I want us to use that to answer the question, how does the depth of water affect the speed of the waves? Now, at the moment, I've talked about timing the waves. But my question is, how does depth affect speed? Now, if we want to calculate the speed of the waves, we need to know two things. We need to know distance and time. And remember, earlier in the year when you dealt with kind of motion, we had an equation which was speed equals distance divided by time. Well, I've got the distance that the waves travel. Sorry, I've got the time that the waves travel from my stop clock. Okay, but I also need to know the distance. That's where my tape measure is going to come in, or your ruler. I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure the length of the tray. Now, this tray that I'm using. Obviously, it's not going to be the same one as you, is 39.6 centimetres. Now, be as precise as you can, so the nearest millimetre with the length of your tray. Now, remember, I'm timing the waves to go three times. So I'm not going to use 39, what did I say? I've forgotten already. 39.6 as my uh, length. I'm going to use three times that, okay? Now, yeah, you've only got to take that measurement once because that's going to be the same for every single depth and every trial you do, okay? so. Before you start, I would suggest measure the length of your tray, times it by three. That's always going to be the same distance. Okay, But when you come to working out the speed, you're going to take that distance. So for me, 39.6 times three. And I'm going to divide that by the time that I get on my stop clock each time. Now, I'm going to create a results table for you. It's going to be linked on, uh, on Google Classroom. So if you look down, there'll be a blank results table. You can see the repeat reading. So for each depth, you have to do first second, third, you're going to work at an average time, and then you're going to calculate a speed, okay? I'll give you a bit of a reminder on the table about how you're going to work at each column, but I think it should be fairly simple. Okay, so at the end of it, I want us to have a complete table showing how depth affects speed. Now, one, one thing to note here, you might be thinking, well, you know, what things have I got to be careful of to, to keep the same, to control this experiment? And one of the things, you might be thinking about is how you lift this up. Does it make any difference if I lift it up from say 10 centimeters like that, or if I lift it up from one? Well, actually it shouldn't make any difference to the speed of the waves. It will affect the height or what we call the amplitude of the waves. If I lift it up from higher, I'll get bigger waves, but they won't travel any faster. So in an ideal world, it shouldn't matter what height you lift the tray from, okay? What we do need to be careful of though, is see if you only lift it from, a, you know, less than a centimetre, the ripples are not going to be very clear and you're not going to see them very easily as they move. Equally, if you lift it up like 15, 20 centimetres and let it go, the water's probably going to come over the side of the tray, particularly for the deep water. So you pick a height that you think is reasonable, okay? You know, maybe it's going to be a few centimetres off and you try and keep it roughly the same. It doesn't matter if it's not kept exactly the same because as I said, it shouldn't affect the speed, okay? Um, obviously, the depth in this case is our independent variable. That's the thing that we've got to change. And the speed is our dependent variable, what is going to change because of it. Now, obviously, things we've got to keep 
controlled here are going to be things like the dimensions of this tray. Okay, because if I alter anything about it, uh, then that, that's probably going to make a difference to the time. But the good thing about this experiment is there aren't really many things that can go wrong in terms of controlling the variable. Okay, so uh, go and collect yourself the equipment you need. Remember, we need a tray, we need a stop clock, we need a ruler. If we can get a measuring tape, we'll use that, and some container just to pour water into. Okay. Once you've got those things ready, open up my blank results table, which is going to be on Google Classroom. And your job for today is to carry out the experiment, to collect all the data, okay, and to calculate the speeds. Okay. Our next lesson, we're going to use them to plot a graph and make a conclusion for this. But for today, you've got to do the experiment and make sure that you've got all the results in that table. Okay. If you have any problems, any things that you're not sure of, okay, watch the video again just to check if I've mentioned it already. If not, please send me an email or write comments in the uh, Google Classroom uh, suite. Okay, thank you.